There is perhaps no greater grief than being parted from a loved one by death. Ever since I lost my sister at age 48 and our nephew at 28, I have sought to understand the meaning of life and death. And though I know with the surest certainty that my time here is limited and that no one can escape the impermanence of life, this does little to prepare me for the shock of death or to help me approach our inevitable separation from this world. Which begs three questions. Why are we born? Why must we die? And what value can we create from this fragile existence? It was from the search for these answers to these questions that Buddhism came into being. The founder of this Buddhism we practice, Nichiren Daishonin, in the 13th century, decided to first learn about death and then about other things. That was when I realized that my attitudes and beliefs regarding death would have great influence on my approach to life. So I began to pray to age gracefully, something I continue to diligently work on to this day through chanting, study, and therapy. I was moved while reading Daisaku Ikeda's first book series, The Human Revolution, how the second president of the Soka Gakkai, our lay Buddhist organization, Jose Toda, wept all night long over his daughter's death and how he dreaded his wife's inevitable passing. While in prison during World War II, he devoted many hours to chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo and reading the Lotus Sutra. Toda came to realize that death was a natural part of life and that accepting its inevitability was crucial for living a meaningful and fulfilling existence. Toda often spoke about the transient nature of life, emphasizing the Buddhist concept of impermanence, or mujo. Buddhism teaches that we should not shrink from the fact of death, but squarely confront it. It is the reality of death that enables us to truly treasure life. It awakens us to the preciousness of each shared moment and the significance of our thoughts, words, and deeds. During our struggle to navigate times of death, we become more aware of the dignity of life and more readily able to empathize with the suffering of others. From the Buddhist perspective, life and death are two phases of a continuum. Life does not begin at birth nor end at death. Everything in the universe, from invisible microbes in the air we breathe to great swirling galaxies, passes through these phases. Our individual lives are part of this great cosmic rhythm. We are the stuff stars are made of. In her children's book, Henry and the Magnificent Snort, Samantha Childs writes, Not only are we all unique, we're also all connected. Therefore, it makes no sense that you could ever be rejected. Everything and everyone, including you and I, are made up of the magic from the stars in the sky. No one is less than, no one is more, and we are all exactly the same at the core. I realize some people may feel that death means cutting all ties with the deceased, but that simply is not the case. Ikeda reassures us, even if only one family member practices Nichiren Buddhism, the power of the mystic law is such that their benefit will permeate the lives of all their deceased family members and relatives. Ikeda also wrote, in death, our life essence is like a current flowing within the ocean's depths. It does not become fixed in one particular place. It pervades the universe and moves in sync with the cosmic rhythm of birth and death. When life and death are viewed in terms of the mystic law, there is no need to fear death. The ultimate questions of life and death are, in the end, a matter of theory and belief. What really matters is how we live our awareness of life's preciousness, and the hope and value we are able to create during an experience that passes so quickly. Because physical existence is not limitless, death is part of life. However, when one dies, one returns to the cycle of nature, and in this sense, life is eternal. I can accept this concept now, and so I have less fear of death. My daily Buddhist practice and our SGI lay Buddhist community continues to encourage me in times of sadness that I can survive and thrive. Also, that when I act with compassion for the well-being of others, I can feel renewed energy and a sense of connection to my deepest essence, the place where my Buddha nature resides. Also, I'm reminded that youthfulness is not determined by age. It's determined by one's life force. One who possesses hope is forever young. One who continually advances is forever beautiful. Here are two questions to consider. If you had only 30 days left to live, what would you want to communicate to the people closest to you? And in what ways has your own experience with the loss of a loved one 
affected how you view life and death.